Well, welcome to Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. I'm delighted to have you here. Thanks for coming. Yay, thrilled to be here. Thank you. Um, so your latest book is called The Tinderbox Soldier of Indira. Indira, correct? Indira. Yes. Indira. Like Gandhi, actually, like Indira Gandhi. Yes. Okay, perfect. That I know. Um, so can you please tell listeners um, what this book is about and the amazing story of how the whole thing transpired, which you wrote in the author's note. Okay. Um, th- well, the, uh, uh, the original inspiration, my inspiration, uh, so I'm going to start there and we'll, we'll back start up there. to yes. hers. Okay. My, my original inspiration were her drawings. Uh, when Yvonne and I first started dating and getting to know each other, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, she started reading a lot of my work and uh, um, she started showing me, sharing with me uh, a lot of her uh, art, uh, which is amazing. And in that batch of uh, original art was uh, a series of drawings uh, in manga style uh, that was inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's um, The Tinderbox. So, you know, looking at the drawings, I go back, I read The Tinderbox, which is like a three-page, five-page, you know, uh, fable, short, fairy tale. Yeah, it's very short. Yeah. Not one of his more famous ones. Um, and and it, just, it just sparked, you know, this, this whole idea in my head. Uh, uh, and her drawings to me were, were very evocative of kind of a post-apocalyptic, you know, Mad Max kind of wasteland, you know, feeling. Uh, and, and it went from there. And I told her it was, you know, a great idea for a movie. And she said, run with it. And I did, you know, I basically ambushed, you know, and hijacked her idea. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, kept going back to the source material because uh, as I've said in, in other interviews, I mean, uh, it's, uh, I've always been a fan of, of art that begets art. West Side Story from Romeo and Juliet, uh, a book uh, called Grendel by John Gardner that was, uh, you know, the bad guy's point of view of Beowulf, which is really hard to understand. I understood Beowulf a lot more after I read Grendel, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and just, you know, thought, let's, let's create this fantasy, you know, sci-fi world. And it, it didn't, it, it's not that sci-fi jumped out at me. Uh, it's that um, originally we thought it would be a good movie. And uh, Game of Thrones hadn't happened yet, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we first started this process. Um, and so I said, well, if we're going to make a movie, you know, and, and we're going to set it, you know, in this sort of otherworldly fantasy, you know, thing. Let's kind of take a nod from Star Wars and, and you know, do it in the galaxy. Was out yeah, the time. exactly. Uh, in a galaxy far, far away that, you know, where we could create our own rules and, and uh, you know, uh, have kings and queens and princesses and soldiers and whatnot. So uh, that was, you know, that was where it all started. And, and the story is very simple. Uh, it's, it's a soldier on a foreign planet. Uh, who um, falls in love with the princess. It's very Romeo and Juliet in that respect. Amazing. And how did you, Yvonne, how did you feel about what happened to the drawings after the beginning? Well, my my original concept was not sci-fi or whatever (laughs) the world this is. Um, I I basically started drawing it uh, back in, in, in the 90s because I was really into the manga comic book style and this is before the internet was available. So you couldn't Google images or just go to the store. It wasn't, it wasn't readily available. Like I remember that time of life. I understand. <laughs> yeah. So there. So, you know, you'd go to the comics shop and you'd order something from a catalog and wait six to eight weeks for them to order it. And so um, I decided I was going to create my own content and, and I'm not a writer and I'm very familiar with fairy tales. So I'm I'm from Germany. I grew up there and a lot of Grimm's and Hans Christian Andersen and all those stories that I uh, grew up with that um, I took one of the lesser knowns because, you know, we know the Little Mermaid and we know all the, uh, so I went, okay, I'm going to go a little bit lesser known. And I started animating a story that was already out there and in the manga style a little bit, uh, and, and, and he says it's kind of post-apocalyptic, and, and, and it was, but it was definitely not outer space. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was earthbound. It was, you know, still witches and princesses and, you know, maybe more Game of Thrones fantasy, earthbound, not outer space. So... I'm, I'm sensing a little uh, discord yeah, here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when he took the idea and said, oh, I'm going to write a screenplay. I basically washed my hands of it. I'm not going to animate or draw or 
illustrating a screenplay and that was pretty much do whatever you want with it take the story it's kind of a, it's a cool story expand on it do what you got to do I thought I was finished with it and now and now here we are <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's well. That's just it. I mean, it it uh, it took on a life of its own. I mean, it really evolved. It it uh, you know it, it, it kind of took over. Now, yeah, and I think people have to understand that this has been a ten year process. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the the uh, the father of the hero is King Raza the forty seventh, and and the reason he's King Raza the forty seventh is because I was forty seven when I wrote the screenplay. <laughs> you know, um, and and uh, so we write the screenplay and it's fantastic and I'm, I'm very happy with it. She's very happy with it. Yeah. And then we realized this is going to be really, really expensive and <laughs> nobody is going to let, you know, me direct it and us produce it. And, you know, we probably, you know, make a little money, you know, by selling it, but it's like, that's, that wasn't really what we wanted to do. I mean, it started out as a, as a project for the two of us. And there, there was always the thought, you know, to novelize it, uh, you know, just as part of the whole world, if you will. Uh, and, and then Game of Thrones happens and, and you know, my manager, J.B. Roberts says, well, you know, write the novel. I mean, at the very least, you've got that. And then, you know, if you sell the rights or whatever, you've created the world. And so now uh, uh, and, and, you know, I kept bouncing ideas off of, you know, Yvonne and, and uh, checking in with her on, on you know, plot and, and, and just an overall feel for it. And, uh, you know, went about the, the process of, of actually writing the novel and, and creating the world in more detail so that even if it gets bought out from under us, you know, this is what it looks like. You know, we've established that. Uh, and um, I love how uh, your manager is just like, yeah, just go ahead and write the novel as okay. if that's like not a big deal. Like that's what everybody that's They're like thousands and millions of people just that's all they want to do in their whole lives. It's like the one sell the one novel. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting because uh, it is. It's easier said than done. And well, it took me 10 years because the day job kept working out. You know, <laughs> I kept acting and, and, you know, getting a job, and, you know, eventually got to the point where I could, you know, do a film or a TV show and write at the same time. But, but it wasn't as if I could devote eight hours a day to writing like, you know, uh, novelists who do this for a living are. Uh, and I think the reason the, you know, that, you know, JB recommended that is because I, I've written a bunch of screenplays. I've written screenplays that haven't been produced. I've written screenplays that have been produced. But whenever I've decided to write something, it gets done eventually. <laughs> so he knew that, you know, I, I, I would do it, that it wasn't a, a frivolous suggestion. Uh, it just took a while. And, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, what's interesting is that, is that speaking of the, the collaboration, I really painted her into a corner. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I stole the idea. She'd wash her hands of it. And then I wrote a novel and it's like, okay, illustrate this. And there's all this stuff in there that wasn't her idea. You know, okay. it wasn't, wasn't what she imagined she would be doing. This is like how we learn the meaning of compromise in a marriage, right? And communication. And communication. Yeah, I think it turned out that we did compromise because – I ended up going back to really old school vintage sci-fi, more, you know, Flash Gordon, Barbarella, mm -hmm. as opposed to the high tech sci-fi that we see in Blade Runner yeah. and, and that of today. So I still took my fantasy world and kind of did a big mishmash of everything else that, and, and tried a few new things that I wasn't as comfortable with and, you know, pushed the boundaries here and there up for myself. And I, I think we got a good mix. So it's not necessarily sci-fi what is expected, but it's not exactly earthbound like it is today either. Well, I mean, that, and that's, you know, that's something that I, that I, uh, I don't know, people always tell you after the fact, right? Uh, um, I didn't set out to write a sci-fi novel. Really. Yeah. You know, right. uh, I didn't, I didn't set out to, to, to write, in any category whatsoever. I wrote the story as it came to us, you know, and, and now people go, well, it's sci-fi, you know, and it's well, it's, YA. it's YA. I, oh, is it really? Okay, great. <laughs> wonderful. You know, uh, my, my, uh, uh, heroes, you know, are, are teenagers, you know, they're 19 and 17, I think, or 19 and 18. Uh, uh and so, yeah, I guess that makes it YA because it is very much a, a Romeo and Juliet story. Uh, but that wasn't the point, you know, I didn't set out to, to, to fit into any particular genre. And I think ultimately uh, what happened with Yvonne's artwork uh, is also a hybrid, which I think is wonderful because it, it certainly has uh, 
that that feel you know like the original Hans Christian Andersen drawings, but also you know a, a bit of Charles Vess and a, and a bit of uh, uh, the Tennille drawings from uh, uh, Lewis Carroll, uh, and you know and Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. But but there are the, those touches of uh, not only that that really cool retro steampunky kind of sci-fi, but uh, uh, a graphic novel sensibility as well. So I I think people will really and and she had to draw creatures that I made up. You know, she yeah, goes, I don't draw amazing. creatures. I don't draw spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I'm reading um, the original uh, Lewis Carroll Alice in Wonderland to my daughter who's seven, um, and I was reading it and I was like. I don't know if this came across my desk, if I would even cover this. Like, it's weird. Do you know what I mean? It's a funny story. Like, who thinks of these things? Um, and it, like, there's less rhyme or reason in that book than probably any other book in all the different ways that it goes off. And yet it's a classic and it's amazing. And there's like, I don't know, there's just no science to writing and things just take off and then they become successful. And there's like no formula. Really, I mean. Yeah, well, exactly, and, and well, the truth of the matter is, that's like you know uh, one of the biggest criticisms. It's too formulaic, you know. Well, right. Yes, exactly. So, well, yeah, if you're going to be original and you're going to do something, then you know you kind of have to follow your heart. And and obviously there are you know certain ground rules and and some fundamentals you know when it comes to writing and and uh, you know you you apply those, but uh, uh, you you just can't compare you know writers. I mean, I mean. Franzen is very different than like my friend Craig Johnson, you know, or my friend Chris Bojelian. Both of those guys are different from one another. You know, their styles are different. Uh, I mean, Chris uh, Bojelian, I mean, his, his, his style will change depending on his subject matter, you know, which I think is just uh, amazing. I mean, his depth and breadth of, of uh, research and, and um, you know, the worlds that he creates is, is wonderful. And by the way, both of those guys were instrumental in, in us getting to the finish line you know, with this book. I mean, uh, uh, I was doing the series Longmire um, when, I, when I really started writing it in, in earnest as a novel and uh, showed Craig and his wife, Judy, the first couple of chapters. And, you know, I see, you know, I'm wasting my time. Is this, you know, really something that, you know, not, this is not for you, you know, <laughs> uh, but, but they really liked it and, and encouraged me. And then uh, 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 Bojelian and the three of us were working on a, on a project together. And right now, uh, yeah. yeah, and he took a look at, at the completed novel and uh, literally pointed us toward an agent and, you know, gave us some advice and uh, has been a steadfast mentor in this whole process as well. So, uh, you know, it's 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 been it's been a lovely journey and yeah. we and we've acquired some some great uh, friends along the way. That's amazing. I love Chris. And it was so nice of him to put us in touch. He's like, and I was like, how did you, how did the two of you meet? And he's like, oh, we met through Twitter, like everyone these days. And I was like, what? Well, I thought he was going to say we go back decades or something yeah. like that. No. No, it's one of those, you know, you know, that makes no sense. If right. you wrote it in a book, they go, no, 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 no. But it's funny. I was reading um, The Flight Attendant, yes. I think it was. And um, we, we both do a lot of reading. We're Big and she'll read something and then recommend it to me and then so it goes on to my pile and yeah oh that's great and so when he started reading it he's like is this guy on twitter i should see if this guy's on twitter well because once again i'm reading the flight attendant goes this would make a great movie uh -huh. you know a yeah, little late to the party you know yeah. I mean, it's it's already a mini series now uh but i thought you know because i'm i'm always looking for something you know to to, to do or to direct a writer you know just just uh, uh and and so, yeah, sure enough, looked him up on Twitter. There he was. Not only uh, was he a fan, but he's a friend of John Fusco, who wrote both the Young Guns films. Uh, uh, and John and I have stayed in touch over the years. And, and so it was one of those two degrees of separation. Uh, and we just happened to be going to New York within a couple of weeks right. of contacting him. And, and uh, he was yeah, he was here. And, and so we, we had lunch. Yeah. And one thing led to another and uh, you know, that's how we're working on a project that we're actually, we're actually in the process of, of uh, adapting one of his novels once again for a mini series. Uh, and, and he wanted to take a look at some of my writing because it was like, you know, here, can we do this together? Uh, and he's, he's, that's so know, great. he's wonderful. Having a mentor is so important and it's so funny cause you wouldn't think, I mean, look how like accomplished you are in your professional life and yet you need like, a person or two just to be like, yeah, you're doing okay. You know, it's so fun. Like, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's when you're trying something new. Yeah, you know? no, it's true. You know, it's, it's, it's 100%. I, I don't think you can assume to be, you know, uh, uh, 
a champion at everything you try. But I mean, my, my whole career has, has been uh, defined by, you know, jack of all trades kind of thing. You know, I write, I direct, I do theater, film, TV. And so, and so uh, I've said it many times, it's, it's all different branches of the artist, same artistic tree. You know, uh, I'm a storyteller and I'm a communicator and whatever platform or format that takes, it's, it's just uh, getting down the, the technicalities of it. Well, yeah, which medium to choose. It's like you yeah. have all these cards in your pocket. You can just deal them out wherever you, uh, <laughs> wherever you want to spread your... We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how successful yeah. this is. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> work, the, uh, the reception has been, has been incredible so far, uh, uh, just, just in uh, not only the, 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 some of the early reviews, yeah. which, which have been lovely. No, but, you're a beautiful uh, writer. You're really good. I mean, you really okay. are. And you, I, you never know when you open a book what you're going to get. And uh, you're a good writer. So that's great. <laughs> As you well know, you know, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. The... And a lot of people automatically saw that. First of all, they thought it was a memoir, which ain't going to happen until I'm 90. I promise you that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, it's unexpected. I don't think people thought that, you know, uh, I was going to write you know, something not only fictional, but that was in this world. And I always liken it to when I, I did the King and I on Broadway so many people thought, oh, the La Bamba guy is going to, you know, thinks he can be on Broadway. Well, you know, I mean, I have a degree in theater. It's, it's, it's my background, you know. And, and even though uh, I'm not known as a writer, I've always written. I mean, I, 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 I actually set out to be a narrative writer, a prose writer in high school. And then, you know, the acting book bit. This and, whole acting career has really just derailed okay. what your main goals are. I can't believe how much it's gotten in the way. <laughs> well, but... You know, what's interesting is that Yvonne has done so many things in her life. We met when she was a, a makeup, makeup artist. artist. Yeah, yeah. I, I obviously didn't become a graphic artist or an illustrator. I went into um, hair and makeup and, and uh, special effects, makeup, all that. kind. So, yeah. Again, very artistic. Did you meet on a set? Or yeah. how did you meet? Yeah. You know, she gave me a haircut, got all up in my grill. That's, <laughs> no. How's it? Yeah. Uh, but... Her art, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a gift. I mean, it's, it's a gift. She blows my mind to this day. And I've, I've always thought, you should be doing this. And I've also said, you know, so many ideas. I've stolen so many of her ideas. And believe me, <laughs> our, our production company, which is Fragious Day, you know, from the Jabberwocky poem, so, so many uh, uh, of the projects that we have in various stages of development are her idea. So there you you know, go. I'm, look at that. I'm riding her coattails, and, and I think at this point in life, she's, you know, I, not good having an opportunity to embrace uh, some of the things that I think she is intending, you know, intended to do. I mean, she's just so gifted and so smart. Well, how amazing to have a partnership where both of you can reach your full sort of creative potential. You know, it's amazing. A lot um, of support. I feel like this never happens the first time. I'm on my second marriage and like, I feel like my husband Kyle and I have the same sort of like synergy where like the more we talk, like the more ideas go flying out in different forms. And I feel like I never hear that about people with their first marriage. <laughs> I mean, like, like there's too, maybe there's just too much. Like, it's, it's, my, it's, my it's your first. Okay. So sorry. Uh, so I then I'm wrong. That I'm out of the water. There you okay. Go. Well, you you uh you changed the trend for me then. That's amazing. <laughs> um, in the book, um, the character obviously is a soldier. Does the mil I know you have a military background in your family. Did that play in to the creation of this character at all? Uh, both of us, you know, have both of you have, do. Uh, yeah, a military background. Um, it's interesting. Um, a couple of things come to mind. I mean, first of all. Hans Christian Andersen's you know, short story starts with a soldier coming back from an unnamed war, clip, clop, clip, clop. And, and uh, that is the imagery of the book, uh, the first image. And the fact that it's an unnamed war and uh, the fact that he's a soldier automatically, you know, in my mind, put, put him in a certain age range, you know, because I think, you know, a lot, a lot of great war stories, you know, are, are from people who have just experienced this, you know, are, are still in the process of, of, uh, defining their own manhood, if you will. Um, and I did a movie called um, Courage Under Fire with uh, uh, Denzel Washington and Meg Ryan, directed by the amazing Ed Zwick. And uh, uh, this was after he had done Glory. And I, and I asked him one day, I said, why do you keep doing, you know, war stories? You know, and he goes, well, first of all, the bang bang's exciting. You know, there's, you know, the, the big explosion, the, the effects and the hardware and whatever else. But 
he's a very well-read man, a very smart man. And, and, and when you think about it, you go back to even Aristotle, who set a lot of things against war. Shakespeare set a lot of things against war. Conflict. Exactly. Yeah. Because you have this conflict, but you also have a, a setting in which you can discuss the more, I don't know, grand uh, aspects of, of human character, of courage, of nobility, of integrity, of bravery. Uh, of all of these things in, in what is truly a life and death scenario. And, um, you know, Hans's uh, story is, is a fairy tale and it leaves, you know, a, a certain tale and there's some magic involved and, and, and uh, you know, some, some just outlandish, fantastical, you know, adventures. Uh, but, but as a novel to me, or e even as the film, I mean, it had to be grounded you know, in a, in a real sense of, of humanity. And, and it's like, why are we doing this? What are we talking about? You know, and, and uh, from all of that came the idea of creating this planet that's split in two. We have two different races of people who are fighting one another. Um, it, it's, it's sweet because Craig Johnson said, you know, it was rather prescient, which I didn't think at the time. But, you know, it's, here we are still again, you know, discussing race, discussing, you know, peace, discussing, you know, where we're at in this, in this incredibly unsettled world and and though it's not meant to be a message piece you know there there is still uh very much i i think um a morality tale at its spine you know the once and future king of king arthur is really an anti-war you know statement so so you know having read you know my entire life i thought you know i i can't i can't set off on this journey and just do a frivolous story there's got to be something a little bit more to it so is it going to be a movie after all that, now that you've backed into it? Do you have any idea? Oh, yeah. Don't we don't yet. know yet. I mean, you know, it's for sale if anybody's got, you know, $100 <laughs> million dollars laying around. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, and what's interesting is that, is that in the time it's taken to write the novel, that, that world has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what used to be a one-off, you know, uh, now could, could easily be a, 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 a miniseries, you know, a limited series of sorts. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know how many books Game of Thrones totally was uh, uh, based upon, but, you know, there is, uh, it, it has created a world. And interestingly enough, I mean, a lot of the people who have reviewed it early on um, said that they so love this world that they would revisit it. She came up with the idea for the sequel. So I'm working on nice. that. Nice. Oh, are you writing a sequel? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Already working on it and, yeah. and literally bouncing it off of her daily. So. You know. Come on, you're the mastermind of the whole she thing. She is the mastermind. We had a certain idea uh, and, and, and was toying around with that for like almost a year. And then one day she came up with a different idea that was out of left field. And I literally went, well, that's it. That's it because it's unexpected. And, and uh, uh, once again, it's about something. And it's about something that's relevant. So, um, you know. Uh, uh, working on that now and, and, and just very, very excited at, at <laughs> this time, not trying not to back her into a corner with the drawings it's, as much. It's all right. We're already there. Yeah. We're, we're there. Uh, yeah. I would recommend approaching this a little differently, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so last... Butting heads a couple of times. <laughs> Um, last question. Do you have any advice? I was going to say to aspiring authors, but really anyone trying to achieve things in this creative way and to be storytellers. For me, it starts with uh, make, creating your own content. You, you want to do something, do it. Whether it's for, you know, whether you're trying to sell it, well, just do it for yourself first and um, somehow put it out there in the universe and something will happen, even if it's many, many, many years later. Well, I mean, but that's, that's the point. That, that, would, that would go toward what I have to say, and I've said this to, to you know, young actors, and that, that's never quit. You know, you, you will never get an opportunity if you quit. Uh, Just keep doing it, yeah. You never know what, what heights you're going to rise to. I mean, when I set out, I just wanted to be a working actor. You know, I was actually a very good uh, student in high school and, and whatnot. And when I decided to make major in theater, you know, a lot of my teachers, my counselors, says, oh, no, oh, oh, yeah, well, what are you going to fall back on? And my standard answer was my ass, <laughs> you know. And, and so it, it's first of all, you have to love it. You have to have a dream. But then the thing that, that you know, so many people and I, and I hate to say so many people who have this sort of overnight success, American Idol mentality, it takes work, you know. Writing especially. I mean, you got to do it. You, 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 you cannot say, well, I want to be an, I mean, our, our 12 year old right now wants to be an author and we love that. It's like, well, are you writing? Are you, you know, are you doing it? 
you know, and, and so some of it is just brass tacks. I mean, it literally is, you know, elbow grease and, and uh, you have to put in the work. And even if you have a dream as, as, as an actor or an artist, I mean, or a dancer, or you have to put in the work. It's a craft. It's an art. It does, it, you know, you may be talented. God bless you if you are, you know, but if, if, if you don't have discipline and you don't have commitment, then nothing's ever going to come from it. You know, there are certain people who get a break because they are talented or they're beautiful or they're whatever. But if they have no staying power, if they have no, you know, uh, a commitment to to the art, they tend to go away because, you know, I mean, especially in today's world, uh, uh, the, the cycle is so fast that you're only flavor of the month for a month. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> a month uh, is a long time these days. No, a yeah. month is a long time these days in a 24-hour news cycle. Just yeah. Just like this last week. But, but yeah. the thing about it is, is, is that um, I've, d- I've done this for so long as, as an actor and I've never given up the writing. It's because I love them both. And, and so uh, uh, it, it, it literally is. It literally is uh, um, just physically, actively going after your dream. I love it. Well, thank you both for coming on. Moms don't have time to read books and chatting. And um, tell me again, if you want me to FedEx it, I'll run down to the store. <laughs> no, you, you read it you hold on to it and when we get to meet in person we'll, we'll, you know. okay all right few okay good all right have a great day you too. okay bye-bye Bye.